Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming along. Um, I'm. Uh, I, I was deafened slightly by uh, someone using um, speaking uh, uh, yesterday with because uh, it doesn't have a pop filter on. You know, one of the little kind of spongy round things. So excuse me if I uh, do that a little bit and kind of too much on the on the prototyping for people type things. Anyway, um, if you couldn't keep up with all this stuff that I was just showing, don't worry. I'm not going to talk about anything related to that. Uh, it's just for for kind of uh, vibes and texture and so on. But it, there is a, there is a thing to this, so it's not all entirely um, uh, stage, you know. So, um, all right. Um, so, I'm, as um, as my esteemed colleague said, uh, I'm going to talk about um, uh, a project that turned from something initially very very simple into something incredibly complicated. Now, that never happens, does it? You know? So maybe there's something I can, uh, I can pass on and, and uh, help you with in your projects. Um, so um, I also talk about it a bit like this. Um, in, uh, throughout my career, I've been doing uh, all sorts of different stuff. And, but most of the time, it's uh, to do with improving profits directly or um, uh, helping people to sell more bananas, as we used to say, uh, at, um, uh, at Tesco many moons ago. And, uh, but once in a while, a project comes along that is really exciting, and you can actually, you know, uh, it contributes towards um, th uh, things in, in a contextual manner, you know, maybe, maybe even save a few lives or, or improve them wholesale. So um, this is one I'm, I'm hugely excited about. So excuse my, my boundless enthusiasm today. Slightly tempered by hangover. <coughs> um, so, a little bit about me. Um, great intro. I'm not going to go on too long. This is like this is, looks like a, a sales pitch here, so I'm, I'm not going to talk. Read it through. But essentially, they're doing design for about 23 uh, plus years odd, um, and I qualified in um, uh, fine arts many, many, many years ago. Um, and but I've, since then, I've kind of trained into design and um, also a lot of. Uh, I front-end tech um, went really early in internet years, um, helping to kind of you know, explore that space. But, um, but yeah, as it grew, I've become more and more into um, um, the human side of things, because that, that's really what I, where I'm seeing things uh, um, perhaps not working or um, the, something that, that, that seemed to be the, the foundation of, of everything we're doing, and I, I don't think any of the talks I've been to today would disagree, frankly, um, which is great. Um, we've, we've made some great strides. But I think the last five years or so, I think there's, there's been a less of a focus on research. So these days, I'm quite researchy. Um, and we're using uh, tools from behavioral science and applied psychology to, um, to achieve those ends. So um, yeah, that's enough. But I also do stuff like this um, to, uh, as a creative outlet when I'm uh, uh, at the end of a long week of meetings or something. Um, so photography, you know, normal uh, straight sort of black and white, but also um, crazy stuff uh, because I've been influenced by my, uh, my first degree. Um, okay, so I, enough about me. Um, I want to know, who, see if I can step down here without falling off. Who's, um, what, what sort of people are here today? Um, how many uh, would you say, who, how many people would identify as developers here? Okay, awesome. How many would identify as uh, testers, QA, QET? There, great. Um, any any product people, um, for want of a better word? We need a new term. Um, maybe a little bit, a little bit, yeah, that's excellent. Uh, I think I'd do a little bit of that as well. And um, anyone in design um, here? A couple of people. Oh, excellent, fantastic, good. Um, who have I missed? Who, any, any kind of um, areas or uh, specialisms? Okay, cool, good, excellent. Um, great, so that's, that's good to know. So. Um, a, a good, nice mix, and why we come to these sort of conferences because it's got that lovely blend. Okay, so um, the uh, I'll, I'll jump straight to it. The uh, we were, my team was commissioned to um, uh, look in by by a certain uh, pharmacological organisation to create um, uh, to help them uh, be a little bit more digital um, in their um, in their working practice. So to to create, uh, you know, to, to bring in the kind of all the, the cloudy things, you know, put an, put an interface or, or some way of interacting with digital elements in amongst all their systems and in their, their, their just within their work spaces. Um, and uh, yeah, it turned it, it's, 
this seems on the surface a little bit like just you know using some you're getting one of these and just attaching a monitor to it and saying there you go you know you, you, there's the whole you know the subject of software and that kind of thing is was slightly um, seemed off topic but um, that's that's not really how it turned out um, so today my story is is one of um, uh, that involves 66 gigabytes of, uh, of research data. I'm gonna have to read this out, I'm sorry. 75% um, uh, of research was live observation and video of scienti scientists working in laboratories. Um, there were uh, two weeks of research, no, four, sorry, four weeks of research, two weeks of workshops, uh, four weeks of design. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I'm, I'm kind of on the fly, I'm uh, obfuscating some of this information because uh, I've, uh, in, in speaking to my esteemed uh, clients, they, they said if you can keep uh, certain things uh, secret. So if you see some um, some pictures that are slightly out of focus or blurred, um, it's not your eyesight. It's I've, I've used the uh, the PowerPoint fuzzy filter. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's some other data there which I'm going to go into in a bit. But we there was a, a huge collaboration as well because we don't become um, we can't go off and, and kind of learn everything about that person. And I, I recognise the some of the limitations of of doing um, even four weeks of research. With a um, with a certain set a group um, and expecting to become an expert in what they do, you know, and un really understand the intricacies. I mean, we, we're, we're pretty good, but you know, I'm not sure anyone's that good. So, um, so bringing in um, what we call SMEs in my company, uh, subject matter experts, and um, uh, bringing you know using them to kind of help us out um, was incredibly powerful in this, and I think that's a, a really nice way to go, uh, frankly, as a, a Making them part of the team, and that's that's kind of a, a theme of this this project. Um, so we had. Um, uh, I wonder if there's a laser on this. Yes, there is. Excellent. So we had. Um, uh, yeah, we had like twenty different um, people from, from from different areas in house. You know, tech um, uh, specialists in certain areas, which will become clear later. Um, I discovered there's actually a, a, a genomics lab in my organisation. I had no idea about, uh, which is fantastic. Um, so there were five people from there, and um, something um, that gets called rapid labs. Uh, people who are very good at making fast um, working prototypes of hardware. So that's quite useful too. Uh, just, just to know how to do that. But it's a quite a quite a strange project um, in that um, it felt um, it felt like I was. Uh, we, we were const it was only about exp exploration. Now, quite often, you know, th that, that kind of discovery phase, that exploration phase, is, is um, uh, you know, we, we're used to making those insights and you know designs tangible and ready to be built. You know, really smoothly building into the um, the uh, kind of uh, whatever the next process is, it be it POC, MVP, whatever. And um, it's um, in this they were they were saying wait we've divided that into two we we don't we do that bit next the first bit is pure exploration which um, you can imagine the, the expression on my team's faces you know oh my god that's awesome you know because um, it's it sort of it felt um, there was a lot of attention in this and you know a lot more time to to unpack what we do and, and get in get, go deeper great okay so. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, you've been really good here, actually. Um, sometimes I have to ask people to uh, turn their phones off, but which is why that's there. But um, I haven't heard anyone's phone going off in um, uh, in any any uh, session in the, in the last two days. So pr uh, I'm sure you'll prove me uh, me wrong in a minute. <laughs> so anyway, we've um, um, today. I want to talk about um, uh, yeah, you and me have discussed. And I want to introduce a bit of context to help you out. Um, how we launched it, how it went, you know, how it's going, and, and some of the takeaways um, if we've got time at the end. Um, but hopefully they'll sort of Im be imparted as we go along. So um, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to do a traditional pr uh, kind of experience report in the timeline of, a, uh, of the project. I'm going to do it in terms of the, the, the problems we encountered and then how we solved them. So it's more about, I thought, like, focusing on the techniques and, and the tools that you can take away. I think it's probably more important, but, but you'll see a kind of uh, meandering line through it, I hope. Okay, so my team is a, a kind of very thin um, spread team around the world. We do um, behavioral science, so people are experts in that. Um, there we have some, some designers, but mostly a lot of re quite experienced people um, in their field, but also process designers, business designers. Um, uh, yes, uh, and, but service design as well. That's, that's kind of one of our key, um, our key methodology, which is um, 
broader than just the sort of the screen where um, uh, it's sort of what, what comes before right back at the beginning. If you think about Amazon uh, for, as an example, uh, their service design would cover, you know, from the time someone sees an advert on, on a, um, a bus shelter or something, um, right through the time, you know, maybe a year into using their product or something like that. You know, that's the kind of the, the timescales would think it of, and even longer with them, um, with you know, financial products and so on. Um, yeah, we've spread quite wide broadly. Um, we've even got a team in um, um, in uh, just established a team in in uh, Riga. Riyadh, sorry, I can't pronounce it. Um, and they're they're all wind team for for um, cultural reasons, but they're, uh, they're they're fantastic, and that's been really a really great experience to bring them board. And they were part of it as well. I just um, they hadn't even launched by the time they were helping us because we were in, um, in really really needed their inputs for, uh, for some specialist um, skills that they had. So um, they they launched some days after, which is great. Um, really good story for them. Um, and our team comes from all sorts of random places, but places like Royal College of Arts, uh, Stanford, MIT, uh, Imperial College, that's um, me and some other people who, um, who lecture there sometimes. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's enough about us. Um, but the way we work is, because I think it's important to, to sort of unpack this a little bit, is to, um, you know, quite often the people we come across, they're, you know, very familiar uh, diagram, I'm sure, to a lot of you. but. Um, uh, you know, we come across a lot of organisations that are either very uh, business-heavy or, or you know, tech-focused or tech-led, and just because the way they've evolved or, or started, um, and uh, and then we, we try to you know bring in and meld uh, the, the kind of the people side, the human empathy side, um, and instill that in in the team and, and leave that with the team when we go. Um, the uh, again um, something not dissimilar, you know, diagrams with with circle uh, rotating circles in. There we go. Um, and but we, uh, we almost religiously stick to this. So having um, uh, whoops, it's counterintuitive. Um, uh, yeah. So so essentially, we'll do our research, and uh, and then we'll kind of that that'll inform our ideas. Um, then you know we kind of actually make something and test it and learn from that. And this is this is easy to say in practice, yeah, we, we all do that, but we do it you know, almost daily or maybe hourly, with some, sometimes in, in the state where we're working. So um, it's, and, and having users on hand even you know, in the next room sometimes in, these, um, in, the, in the flow of our projects. Um, how we do some of these things, I think I'm, uh, this is probably enough uh, information for you guys to, um, Going on. Um, one last thing, though. Um, these, this, um, the kind of way we, we approach things is, is a little bit different. It's upstr quite upstream of, um, of say, um, many projects where they're they're sort of ongo perhaps if you're ongoing for many years, you'll have a, a, a certain type of cycle. But we're we're interested in um, in uh, quite often it'll be the kind of taking point on a project or or on a on a certain idea and he helping companies and organisations to formulate those ideas in their mind before they start projects. So. Um, uh, you rather than just kind of you know this kind of, um, this uh, business driven approach where they say you know we, we want one of those and uh, which you know has has its um, um, problems sometimes um, so we go um, you know quite often we'll really rapid we find that's that's very very productive way to work so uh, two sometimes four weeks um, of uh, of research and prep for the and that which feeds directly into a, a kind of workshop um, of uh, which in this case was was actually um, uh, ten days, um, which was grueling uh, and brilliant, um, and then uh, and then two really important things. Um, some research with um, Stanford done in, in um, 2019 said that the um, uh, of of kind of large scale or, um, enterprise design thinking projects, and, and indeed these kinds of areas of discovery were failing because. Um, Firstly, they were losing touch with the users. They weren't doing that kind of really relevant and primary research with people. Um, sadly, it's, I think I, I think I tend to agree with them. My experience, um, it's, it's kind of uh, gone down in people's priority um, in projects. But um, on the other side, this momentum after these after these workshops um, is incredibly important. Um, so, n so you know the kind of the ideas and the, the literal you know things that you hand over f um, because you can't be with them forever. Um, like you know, sort of whatever things that best represent the results of a conversation that happened um, get left on a shelf, and that's sad and um, a waste of time and money and everyone's um, effort. So um, yeah, we really tried to work hard on this bit and bring it to life. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, that looks a bit like this. 
Um, but just so you know, there's often development going on in the background, and so it's, it's not just come some um, some sort of large data upfront type thing that um, that's disconnected from everyone else. Hell no. Ah, quick coke break. Right. Um, and we've done all sorts. So our scope is quite large, given the, the people in our team. We, we've done sort of VR sketching, uh, works with um, ML people. Um, uh, in this, this case, we, uh, we actually uh, double down on, on them some, uh, some new interactions. Um, but we also do you know, find these, these uh, very classic and familiar tools useful. So um, uh, you know, research wireframes and things, it, it, whatever, whatever's necessary. The hardest thing is to explain to your stakeholders um, that we don't know what we're going to deliver, which is, um, I'm, uh, it, it's a familiar challenge to some of us, but, um, but in, in design, it's, they, it's quite ingrained, I think, um, in that you're, you know, they, they expect to see something shiny at the end, you know, so um, they'll get something shiny, of course, they will, but, but not, we, we don't, we try to explain that it's, you know, the, the, the whole point of discovery is to find something you don't know, and you know, so, yeah. Um, okay, okay. So, re uh, right onto the um, enough about uh, us. Onto the context. Um, uh, so, this um, this organisation asked us to um, help them with this problem because there were um, screens uh, that they had already, and you can see the problem here already. Um, so, when you go in and out of these clean rooms that are sealed, you know, um, you've, you've all seen the uh, the kind of people in suits who um, you see in the movies without break and so on. And, and you know, can you imagine? the kind of um, uh, contamination that you could get, both in your experiments, but with people when you're working with things. And these were, these were the, those vaccine labs, you know. So, so this, this stuff is, is definitely something they're trying to stop, not spread more widely. And you, and you, can't, um, you can't kind of raise an iPad to, uh, you know, the right temperature to kill all the bugs on it. It just sort of, it kind of turns into a, a small kind of blob on the, uh, on the floor. So, um, uh, yeah, so that, that was a problem we had to, to look into. But also, um, the way they were solving it at the moment was to perform the experiment, observe it, or remember what they've been doing. Sometimes these exper experiments run for five hours, um, and then go back and report about it. Now, as a researcher, I know there's an epic flaw there um, around um, uh, the, you know, the, the sort of inaccuracy that can build, be built up. Memory is not a uh, um, not the most accurate of, uh, of tools for recording stuff, and, and particularly very detailed things. So, um, so. What was uh, the concept of experimental quality was defined by the time could be defined by the time between the observation um, of, the, of you know very detailed observation of in an experiment to the time they record it and so having a long a high number uh, is not good in order to solve that. Oops, wrong way. What? Okay, right. So, so this yeah, I've, I've explained how that's good. that's that went already. So, um, a little bit about the project anatomy. Um, uh, yes, if you think this, the background is ew, then um, uh, don't, don't ask me to explain the kind of things that they do in their experiments with um, when they're testing and researching for vaccine, um, uh, uh, you know, creating vaccines to, to, to stop pandemics, because um, it's quite icky. But um, we, uh, to, to unpack this a little bit, um, is it going to work? Yes, good. Um, the, uh, so the project geography was... Um, uh, Quite distributed, and I think I'm going to show you this because the the complexity of this in the short period of time was um, were of, of people involved, and uh, so I did it. So that people, sorry, um, the complexity of, of kind of stakeholders and people who wanted to contribute was was kind of crazy, and on the high side of uh, in that I've ever experienced. So um, yeah, so there's a um, uh, bunch of people here. There's uh, my team here, and you know that's my team as well, but. Um, there are some other other people here, um, the um, the team in Riyadh, um, the and some other designers here who were um, uh, you know so we were chasing the sun with our with our project. Um, but then the sta adding the stakeholders, th there's just a few more, and I, I've piled them up. So there's 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 a whole bunch here, a whole bunch here. But then adding the number of users um, who were actually involved, who we had a test with. So that was another level of um, complexity. Then the potential users, because the, the stakeholders kept saying, you know, um, we'd really like to see if you could, you know, do something that fits perhaps even more broadly. That would be amazing. You know, no pressure. Um, so, um, so that was interesting. But there was a whole, whole uh, there was a group in um, Singapore um, and uh, and 
centering on um, Dresden, Canada. And um, uh, for us, the main site of research was um, in, um, uh, I have to obfuscate this, somewhere in Virginia. Um, and so the domains um, in, uh, in science were, um, were these, these um, six here. And why am I mentioning this? Well, there's, um, you'd think that scientists talk about their process if they're working on something very closely together. And uh, it's much like companies and teams. Um, actually, they don't. And I think when we first started talking to them, um, you know, we speak to, spoke to every single uh, rep represent representatives, SMEs, and users from, from every one of these domains, and they all swore um, that they, they were completely different. They worked entirely differently. Nothing was the same. Uh, and you know that, that you can't even compare us, you know. So, that, um, which is interesting, but um, we, uh, I didn't believe them. Uh, and finally, um, the, uh, a geography of tools, if you like. Um, so this was broad. Um, I think when we started out, it was you know arms sticking, uh, you know, screwed into walls, and maybe some tablets or something. Um, but uh, exp exploded into um, gesture uh, IXD. Um, Robots, transparent LD, LED monitors, um, ocean graphics, um, infrared, lidar, you name it. Um, sounds like a, bu uh, a, a looks like a, a you know the kind of buzzword of design uh, at the moment, but um, it was uh, quite exciting. Um, so um, that is very dark. So I think I'm gonna read that out. Um, the the goals we had to start with were. Um, to understand uh, the needs faced by teams working in these different workflows, these, these different scientists uh, types, um, generate those insights uh, for some decision making, um, generate solutions, uh, idea solutions that can create a positive impact on those workflows. Okay, that's fairly clear so far. Um, collective alignment amongst project stakeholders. Now that's a that's a secret weapon of the um, of those um, all important uh, workshop types things and collaborative uh, interactions and. Um, and also a smooth integration from existing and new uh, ways of working. Now that's in a, a very small sentence that can potentially take years. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, a huge task in some places. So um, we, we have a little trick our, up our sleeve for that, which we're going to. Um, cool, so, um, so we, um, we got, got on the phone to lots and lots of people. It was, it was sort of 50-50 um, sort of time when uh, uh, some people were, were unlocked down, and some people were. Some people we could travel to, some people couldn't. I couldn't travel, um, but um, yeah. So we had uh, remote research in um, Canada and uh, Germany, and then in the US we had we were on site for the for the bulk of it, um, which is brilliant. And this is um, my one of my esteemed colleagues, um, uh, all masked up and ready to go. This is the least of the masks they had to wear, um, but you know we're really familiar with this stuff now, you know. But but um, there were also. Um, they had, um, but sometimes they had to wear, you know, little chew things and whole outfits. Um, can't take photos of that because the camera wasn't um, it was a source of contamination. Um, so our research, um, almost going back to the first thing you saw when you came in, um, we were thinking, okay, so you just you think uh, you know, it's si uh, cutting edge science, um, really really important. Um, sh it must be like like this or like this or look like this or like this, or you know, any number of awesome things. I've seen the movies, you know, we've all, we've all been there. Um, maybe, maybe this guy would know, you know, he's um, uh, something like this, you know, this gets shown every time Tom talks about a, uh, you know, kind of the future of design. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, maybe, maybe they were making it happen. Um, maybe some robots, uh, that's CES this year. Um, but actually, no, it's, um, it's a lot more kind of pragmatic than that. I mean, some of the, um, like I say, the, these are sort of samples. I can't show the uh, the, the, the main pictures. It's um, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of um, covered by uh, all sorts of um, things I've signed. But um, but some of the benches were wooden, um, and some people were um, writing, uh, you know, with uh, sharpies on uh, on on things on on flasks and. Um, Using scissors, you know, really, really domestic stuff. A lot of the scientists said, you know, we have more in common with chefs than with uh, with what you think scientists are. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's another person there, sort of, uh, dealing with some things. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she had her mobile phone down. So this is the kind of um, challenges they had 
um, to, uh, th there's a certain amount of freedom and ad, ad hocism in their approach, which is a good thing when you're trying to um, uh, come up with new things, but it's um, yeah, not so good if you want to reduce um, contamination. Um, and yes, this is the thing that got me. Um, people writing with pens and pencils on bits of paper, which uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if, uh, if you agree with me, but it just seemed uh, completely different to my expectation, but that's a research flaw. Oh, and of course, we've all seen the, the programs or the, or the old uh, stories around, yeah, you know, keep your keyboard clean, don't eat lunch over it, because um, it's icky if you do. Um, well, imagine that times, you know, at to sort of pandemic proportions with a, um, a laptop there. Now, I'm not, I don't want to bring these guys down. They were, they were doing an amazing, you know, they, they have done and continue to do an amazing job in circumstances um, that are quite difficult and they, they get results, but it clearly, you know, we felt we could do a bit better than this. Um, now, it wasn't necessarily within the scope of this project to, to sort of improve all that, but when we started thinking, so how are we going to reduce this contamination? How are we going to solve those problems? We just kept hitting um, uh, all these problems. So th the, the most high-tech um, element was the air conditioning in, in these labs. So they've got like uh, all these, you know, tons of research gone into it. They've got these kind of huge expensive systems that, sh that you know, fluid dynamics, um, just, you know, to, to aerate cabinets to stop, um, you know, the, the, the bugs getting out. But, um, but that's felt like a kind of compliance-led approach to design rather than a, you know, kind of a more considered approach. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it reminded me recently of this, um, uh, this ridiculous um, thing that came on. My sister's a microbiologist, so she sent this to me uh, whilst I was doing it. And uh, it's, you know, it's something that seems cute on the surface. Look, isn't that, that cute? But actually, she was saying, That's, this is the most dodgy cartoon I've ever seen. You know, this, is, this, is, this guy's going to die or, or kill people. Um, and, and also, you know, the, this is the, the other thing that, that it felt like, and it just piles of paper and, and all sorts of stuff, and um, quite almost an academic feel, you know. Um, so, why hasn't that changed? You know, these guys are, are incredibly intelligent, and, and sure, they, re they recognize all these problems. Um, well, apart from being constantly and unbelievably busy, you know, saving people's lives, um, there are all these things. Now, this is the saddest picture I've got, almost the saddest picture I've got for you today, because um, the, I had to remove all the information from this as a result of the, um, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of, you know, because reasons, okay. So, um, the, but essentially, um, this connected experience that we wanted to create, this kind of really um, uh, type of experience, had a whole ton of things stopping it from happening. So, um, I, I'm not one to, to encourage um, the extension of scope, but, um, uh, there felt like some some change and inspiration was needed to the project. Um, so uh, I, I've kind of put a bunch of uh, problems, uh, or, or a bunch of problems, were put in front of us, um, and I've communicated those to you. But um, uh, the the way we go about we went about this was partly our current uh, methodology, which I felt would be really nice to share. So um, one of the big things um, in, in our method, and we're not alone in doing this, um, uh, D School describe it very well, is uh, that they're a uh, design school in, um, uh, in the US um, I at Stanford. And they, um, uh, one of their biggest, when they're teaching people to, to uh, design um, in, a, in a much more broad way, they talk about um, Navigating ambiguity, and that, that's really what, I, what I'm um, uh, one of the strongest pieces, I think. And, and it's something I think we've I've heard in several conversations throughout um, th uh, today and yesterday. Um, this is this, it's a hot topic, I think. I thought it was just me. Um, so, um, but ex ambiguity in project scope and planning. Uh, feels kind of dodgy, right? You know, we, we fight against that. You know, I, I love this. This is um, uh, a chap who, oh no, the, um, the credit has gone off the bottom of the screen, but a chap called Alex um, may, had a Halloween um, outfit and um, can't quite see here on the right, but um, this is, um, this is scope creep. And, he's <laughs> and un un under his, uh, his coat here, he's got things like, uh, you know, um, you know, add feature, feature creep sort of ideas and things happening. I just thought that was the, the best Halloween outfit that only text would understand, you know, type thing. Um, 
But actually, it's more, it's more like this. And I promised you um, cat pictures in a tweet earlier. And, and there's, there's my cat uh, when, it, when it was a kitten. Um, the, um, and he's uh, on, a, on a yoga mat. And why am I showing you this? Apart from it's, uh, it's quite cute. Um, it's, um, it, it's a kind of a mindful um, flexibility to expanding the depth of a project as opposed to the, the kind of scale and, and you know, just, just uh, expanding the length in ad infinitum. Um, and we, we, you kind of, it, it's almost like a pivot um, in the way we, uh, we said, okay, well, it's, it's all very well to be doing this bit, but, the, the, you know, it's just not going to cut it. So how, how can we go about this? So first of all, let's widen the scope. Let's see what, what do we really need to do to, to solve this problem as opposed to, um, you know, how can we just chip away at the bottom piece? Um, so the other tools we use uh, are something um, that's in, in my field is known as environmentally authentic user research. Um, so that's got nothing to do with CO2. Um, I do believe in you know, climate change and I wholeheartedly support it. However, um, in this case, it means um, the, uh, it's a field uh, in research which is concerned more with um, really, um, what should I say, uh, really strong, um, what's the word? Um, oh yeah, so essentially, um, the authenticity of the place that you do the research is incredibly important. You know, so um, the difference between a cold lab where you're doing a test and a place, uh, you know, doing a test in, in, in the real world, where the, that user is going to actually use the app is, is enormous. And I've seen huge differences between, uh, you know, just doing a test on a, on a, on a, on a desk in the office compared to, say, um, building a travel app in 2001, um, testing it in the airport in a, um, uh, 2011, um, testing in an airport and in a railway where people's, uh, you know, excitation levels are heightened. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're slightly anxious about getting to the departure lounge on time. You know, all those kinds of things. It, it's measurably different the, the way people respond to in, interfaces and so on. So having that that authenticity is critical, I think. And so we become a bit like um, field biologists. Uh, you know, hunt, going out there and seeing how people are doing things. Um, yeah, I've I've used uh, I had to um, obfuscate all this stuff, so I used the um, the, the pirate Laura Mipson, um, I had for your uh, for your pleasure, um, and and so uh, all all the, the data in these personas was, is now uh, in pirate speak apparently, but uh, but you get the general idea. Yes, we did use personas, um, and that that is the basis of that. Then if you treat them like buckets of information uh, and keep on topping them up, then it's um, it's a good thing. Um, and that's that's really the the kind of the strength of them, uh, amongst others. But we also added some a, a kind of Venn diagram to describe the kind of users that we did have. Um, also, in our in our uh, you know weeks of research, we went and followed uh, hunt lots and lots of scientists. Each one of these is a, is a, a journey of a scientist throughout their experiment, um, and photographed them and picked out details. I can't show you any more than that, unfortunately. Um, okay. The, the next part, I'm speeding up slightly here because uh, um, I wanted to reach the end um, in, and show you all I can. Um, the, uh, we, you, yeah, you have to become almost um, like develop ESP, you know, rem remote sensing to, uh, to do remote research. It's been in incredibly tricky over the last few years. So, um, uh, yeah, t the, what, being inventive with it is, is, a, is a really great way of, of, of getting the stuff you need. So we, we asked them to send um, pictures of their, um, of their fire escape instructions and then describe where things were happening because then we could then map out the, what the experiences were and, and you know, connect evidence and then be able to compare what those different uh, experiences were. And, and we began to see parallels between them. Um, the, the key, one of our strongest approaches, I think, is um, participatory design. Um, so getting the people who are using the product and the people who, the stakeholders, all creating and designing with you, and literally, um, in workshops. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, so, like, uh, typical four-day workshop there, and, yeah, I had to blur it, I'm afraid. These, I, can't, uh, I can't show you some of this stuff. But, um, the, yeah, you can see here they've, uh, that there's, there's uh, my fellow facilitator and some, I promise you they're smiling even though they haven't got, they've got masks on. Um, the, it, 
It's also informality is incredibly important. Um, so I promised you cats. Um, this is the TCS cat, um, and he's he involved. He's involved in a warm up um, week, which we call um, uh, wash this cat. And I can show you this. I can't show you any other re results, not because it's NDA, but because the things they do to this poor cat uh, to tr in, in order to wash it is horrific. I've seen machines. Um, I, I don't don't know details. It's too traumatic. But um, but it's uh, informality is incredibly important. I think I really do. Um, uh, next, in, as a result, we managed to chart a, hu a consistent experience down the one wall of the workshop um, and found that actually, yeah, the, all of these scientists did actually have a, um, uh, a lot in common. Um, these are the ideas they had coming out of the workshop. Um, 140. That was good. And, and that, um, I'm not asking them to do the job, you know, our job of design for us, but it... Um, we, we kind of tend to steer them as, as they in, uh, kind of come up with ideas and so on, but it's really, really important to, uh, to get real people um, t all engaged in this. It's kind of a sense of ownership, it's engagement, it's fantastic. Um, and it's, they, they go on that journey with you, you know. Great. So we also um, use design principles, um, which is, you know, I think this is common to a ton of disciplines, um, but and very familiar to many people. But it's it's, it's quite fashionable at the moment in design. But the um, uh, essentially um, the uh, on on uh, there are lots of different ways of working them out. But um, coming up with something which um, which was able to be transported uh, between teams, between groups, between all these people, um, and and we'll go forward it throughout the project because we weren't we're not going to involve further down the line, or maybe well we don't know. Um, so. Um, that is critical, and, and it's a sort of way of, of, of maintaining that momentum out the other end. Um, okay. Yeah, prioritization as well. Um, really super important, uh, keeping it tangible still, even though it was um, exploration. Um, so design prototyping. This is really, really important. Um, only only uh, people from the UK will get this, I think. Um, so let me show you some nice things. So, yeah, I, I'm so sad. It, it, I can't show you the, the, the focused versions. But you get the general idea. We actually bought um, uh, glasses and then had um, uh, sketched things out and made you know, really kind of ad hoc stuff, a bit like they do in Blue Peter when they're, um, uh, or did back in the day, when they're creating little kind of models of things with, with sticky back plastic and stuff. Um, and that really works. You'd be surprised. It feels... Um, we, we also made, mocked up a, um, a laminar airflow hood. Um, the next um, the authentic design testing in situ um, is, is, again, incredibly important. So once you've made those sort of crazy things, um, actually trying them out with people is, is awesome. So um, prototyping in the, in the labs it's themselves was, was absolutely stunning. So uh, I think I've got some slightly better pictures, but you can see how we went from sketch to, uh, to sort of uh, mock-ups and so on, and then in the lab. Um, I got, there's definitely a better one. Um, there we go, yeah. So, um, yeah, we actually, for, for the purposes of creating you know, screens in the, uh, in the labs, we, we actually would write on bits of plastic and stick them up on, on there. And that feels really ad hoc, but it means you can learn so quickly, you know, by changing something, rubbing it out, starting again uh, with someone else. It's, it's incredible, it's great. Um, also, uh, I, was, I had a fixation that um, the voice control would be the way forward. You know, you think hands-free, obviously, right? You can use, why not make a lab Alexa? Um, but actually, um, this is one of those times when testing uh, and using, you know, really quick prototyping tools that you have these days for t to, to mock up this stuff were, was incredibly um, useful. Um, here are some, some mock-ups I created. And um, they proved that, yes, voice was great, but... Um, in fact, the combination of voice and a whole bunch of other interfaces, uh, ways of interacting with stuff, was um, was really the way to go. You know, but playing to their strengths, not their weaknesses. Um, uh, okay, so a couple more things. Um, concept speed dating was awesome. Um, I think you can probably guess what this is. It's sort of doing really, really quick tests and then t um, changing when we get users into one room um, and talking through. But I think the la I think probably the last thing I want to leave. Um, of the, of the sort of ideas and things that we, we uh, put together um, was really developing this, this character of the AI. You know, how, how would a, um, a helpful bot uh, of some sort, you know, what would the character be like? That, that, that seems to be really important um, to people. So we, can, you know, we, we tested a few um, and designed a few, and you know, we got some really great feedback on that and turned out that the, 
um, the kind of real robot, honest to God, I'm just a robot, I can do things, but you know, I'm, I'm not more than that, was actually the, 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 the best thing that they wanted. Um, yeah, so, so I think the, the, probably the last thing, because um, some of you may want to run on, um, I've got a couple more things to talk about, but um, the, the main, I think the last thing I want to talk about was the um, uh, role play. So whilst mocking up those ideas, um, that nothing beats actually doing it for real. So I think this, to me, this won like, the, the award for, uh, for, for best type of research uh, la last year, um, which was actually the, f the physical presence of someone that uh, had a sort of, um, you know, there was an intelligent system, actually helped us to see and help people to interact with what it might really be like having a, a robot in the uh, in place. And, it, and people are developing these now, so um, it's not as kind of crazy as it sounds. But it was just um, there's, there's, there wasn't really another way to do it without uh, that testing. But I think the physical space is incredibly important. You know, we we discovered that um, you know the robot would have to learn how to open doors and uh, do do certain things. You know, traverse certain spaces and not take up too much room. So there's all sorts of design elements uh, in the physical space that are incredibly important as well. So um, yeah, so we, we've uh, we also tested some of these and sketched out some ideas. Um, constantly throwing ideas out there from from the designers in um, uh, Riyadh and um, uh, on the east coast of. Um, uh, in Kochi, on the east coast of India, um, which is great. You know, th these these things were fed into our, our kind of almost daily testing. Um, okay, so the, the, the one of the coolest things was being able to reach out to a team I didn't know we had in um, actually in Delhi w um, to, um, to discover that they can make things like this. And so they were developing on uh, developing a robot. So they they had some very simple software, but um, it it actually had something, a real thing, that was happening. Uh, and I can show you this. This is something that's um, been just, we've released all the papers for this and so on, um, and um, uh, patent pending and so on, blah, blah, blah. But um, it's, it, it's super cool. Um, I can, please do stop by after, um, after this, and um, uh, if you want to see any, anything more in this area, because we've got a lot, tons and tons of stuff that, and ideas that we used that I had to not show today, but this is really great um, and, and a great piece of prototyping uh, in sort of um, as, as a sort of very distributed team. Um, uh, okay, so onward motion. Um, I'm going to skip design blueprints because that's a whole other ballpark. I think I did a whole talk on that. Um, they're too complicated um, and too big. So. Um, the final thing I'll leave you with is uh, I can't show you the full result that we gave them. So instead, um, here are some nice, um, some nice lambs eating uh, in spring uh, at the end of the project, eating some grass there. Sadly, I can't show you the real video, but I can show you some, some clips. So uh, here's an example of the chap who was helping to create those um, things. So we're, this is prototyping um, gestural. Um, design. So this is it not like on, on a screen, but actually in space. You know, trying to find out where, how easy it is to, to have controls that would complement the voice controls um, by moving your hands around in certain ways. And actually, that it's, um, it's pretty cool. I mean, it did work, but we green screened it and then overlaid that um, uh, along with some motion graphics uh, and a number of things. Um, uh, here's a, a screenshot from that. So we also had pro uh, tested proximity. So here's a screen on the um, the front of the um, cabinet, which is really really interesting. So when you're right down the other end of the other end of the lab, you can see all the data you need for that experiment. But then when you come back to your working station, it it pops back to a projection on the back of the um, the laminar airflow cabinet. So that was pretty cool. Really nice. Um, just tiny little things that you don't think are important until you actually start testing something in in in, in the physical world. You know, in the in the environment. Um, and yeah, final couple of videos. So here we mapped some of our graphics over actual video that we captured in the research. So another reason for capturing all that videos, all those videos, um, I could show another really quick clip. Um, so here's an example of um, how the uh, scientists might be using, doing a thing, and then maybe they need some analysis on their experiment, and show, so they've, they've interacted with it and shown what it might be like. So this is, I mean, it's kind of basic, it's really simple. Um, Technology and to render as a as a if you're a designer and you know um, a few you know After Effects and so on, but but actually it's incredibly powerful for the teams and the stakeholders concerned. 
So, um, yeah, fine. I've running slightly, but thank you very much for your patience. I'm not all running out five minutes ago. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, great. Thanks all for coming. I, um, if you do want to stay on, um, I would be happy to take any questions, but I do understand if you need to dash off and do what you need to do this afternoon, go and sit in the sun or something. Uh, so the question was, um, I had an intuition that the, uh, the needs of the teams were uh, not as disparate as um, they claimed. And um, yeah, I mean, this is how we work in research. We, make, we kind of come up with these hypotheses and we say, okay, so I think this. You don't let it sway your, your experiment, of course, and you design in any kind of, out any kind of skew. But, um, but we discovered that uh, in, in, in the dialogue, we managed to, um, in fact, find that they had a very common theme. And we were able to abstract it out to about six steps that they took for every single group. And it was nuanced for some of them, but it didn't matter. The differences that they had were irrelevant compared to the solution. So that was, that was really cool. You know, and that was a classic um, way, you know, cl piece of research, you know, just to sort of take that and then discover that actually distilled down, no problem. Yeah, it was great. Um, well, no, I, I, I love that. I wish I'd, I'd, I'd been doing it myself. I think I did to the, the German stakeholders, but um, the, uh, my colleague broke it to the, uh, to the other guys in um, uh, Virginia. And um, uh, yeah, the question was, how did I break that, that news to them? Um, well, when, when you're running, you know, when they're being involved in the process, it's a really, actually it's got an underlying, really, really good question. Um, Underlying that is when they're involved in the process, they see what, how you're working, they see what you're doing, they're involved with it, they've got engagement and ownership almost, you know. And so they, they just bought it. You know, they were like, yeah, of course, we, we now we get it. Yeah, we saw you do the work and we saw how you do it, you see your methodology, you know, we're transparent. And it's not giving the game away, it's just actually bringing people into your world. So yeah, that was, um, that's super critical to me. Yeah, thanks. Great one. Yes, please do. Definitely, and on the boat as well. So, uh, and I, I love this topic. I could talk for hours on it, but I promise not to bore you too much. <laughs>